Good evening. Good evening, councillors. Would you please remain standing while the Reverend Canon Edwards leads the council in prayer? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I've been upgraded to a microphone for the first time. Uh, dear councillors, like you, I have a, a day job. In addition to my uh, not very onerous duties as mayor's chaplain, I'm parish priest at St. Mary Magdalene's uh, Wandsworth, where I hope to welcome councillors as many of you as possible for our civic service at the beginning of February, first Sunday. We have some splendid music, uh, the shortest sermon of any church in Wandsworth, and also free drinks afterwards. So I hope that uh, uh, will work. And I'm also a, a canon of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem. And as such, I, I visit the Holy Land several times a year. And earlier this year, I was in Jerusalem during the holy month of Ramadan and was able to witness as darkness fell over the holy city on a Saturday night, marked by the sounding of the shofars, the ram's horns, joyful groups of Jewish people celebrating the end of Shabbat with visits to restaurants and bars and shops, while Muslims broke their daily fast with equal and evident happiness. It was a very vivid reminder to me that people of faith can and do rejoice in the celebration of other people's faith. And I know this council for many years has supported just that sort of diversity and celebration. In fact, the inability to do so is an infallible sign of the weakness of one's own faith. I personally have never met a Christian who couldn't wish a Muslim Eid Mubarak or greet a Jewish person with Shabbat Shalom, and I have received the same courtesy in my travels in the Middle East. And I mention this because at this time of the year, some council or other can be guaranteed to make the news by refusing to use the word Christmas or banning some trivial aspects of the festival, a crib, a, a tree. The Christian feast then becomes a political football. We have examples of this. Barack Obama was the first and only American president to avoid the word Christmas in all his eight presidential Christmas cards. And Donald Trump gets raucous cheers from his supporters when he talks of bringing back Christmas to the White House. I hope and pray that our council will continue to stay aloof from such foolishness. For the politically correct fear of Christmas is not a sign of secular sensitivity, but rather an indication of a lack of human empathy. I wish you, councillors, and all the people you represent and work for, whatever their faith or lack of it, a blessed and peaceful and happy Christmas when it comes. Please be seated. Hello, I'd, I'd like to make an adjournment motion. Is it seconded? Uh, th thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd, li I'd like to adjourn um, the council for 30 seconds to draw attention to the importance of culturally specific care and the valuable contribution that Mushkul Hassan and other specialist groups make to the community of Wandsworth. Um, so, so, look, my mother came to Britain from Jamaica in 1964, she was part of the Windrush generation. And like many new arrivals from the Commonwealth, she faced down discrimination and a hostile welcome from her neighbors um, to carve out a life for herself and children here in London. Uh, one of the ways she kept herself positive, despite the abuse she'd get on the streets and in her job as a nurse, was, was to keep a firm grip of her culture. Um, the food we ate, the music we listened to, the way we worshipped were all heavily, heavily influenced by her Jamaican roots. She's now in her 70s and fortunately is still going strong. At least once a week she'll make the trip, trip from Earlsfield down to Brixton, what's left of the Brixton market, to buy Jamaican food. Even though we tell her, you know, plantains and sweet potatoes are available everywhere now, they're available in Sainsbury's. Um, she still worships in a Pentecostal church and still listens to old school reggae and gospel, gospel songs. When you're part of a minority community and are constantly, uh, constantly having, to, having your very right to exist in your home challenged, 
Your culture and customs can be a shield which helps you remember that you weren't always an alien. Part of the reason home care matters is that residents get to, hold, get, get to keep hold of their lives and their independence while still receiving the help they need. Welcoming someone into your home when you're proudly independent always presents challenges. It's so much better when the person coming to your home has an understanding of your culture, your food, your language, and your customs. To witness exactly this sort of intergenerational cultural sensitive, sensitive care, all we need to do is go down to Tutin and visit the amazing Mushkal Hassan. Launched from, from Nazim Abubakar's uh, front room in 1993, in its 25 years, Mushkal Hassan has looked, over, looked after over 6,500 vulnerable people, largely from a South Asian background, but people from all backgrounds. It provides over 100,000 hours of, of care per year and has 100 employees, mainly, from South Asia, mainly South Asian women, many of whom hadn't worked before. The Care Quality Commission rates Mushkal Hassan as delivering safe, effective, caring, responsive and well-led home care service. And Tutin is now at risk of losing this vital service which has looked after both the Mayor of London and the Tutin MP's family in its time. It's indeed, shame. It's not just, it's not just the service, service that's at risk. It's 25 years of community knowledge um, and experience. If community heroes like Mushkal Hassan don't fit into ones of service model, it's the model that needs to change, not the organisations. Uh, perhaps, perhaps this shows that the council misjudged how ready community providers were to take part in the complex EU procure procurement process. The council needs to provide more care for the voluntary sector to enable it to thrive and develop. Please, can the leader and the, and the cabinet member agree to work closely with us and with Mushkal Hassan and with the clients to allow, allow this important organisation to survive and flourish? Community matters. Cultural knowledge can't just be bought in. It shouldn't be an afterthought. I urge members to show their support for this specialist care service in Wandsworth and especially Mushkal Hassan by supporting this adjournment. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Councillor McLeod. Um, I think since the, the leader has been mentioned, uh, I ought to now say that um, we should be sending our condolences to Councillor Govindia and his family for the loss of his father yesterday. In these circumstances, um, Councillor Cook will be uh, standing in for the leader. Uh, now, uh, Councillor Ellis, do you wish to respond to Councillor McLeod's uh, uh, Yes, motion? thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, 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 I'm happy to, to respond to Councillor McLeod uh, and also to join with him in um, saying what an excellent job uh, Mushka Lasan and indeed all our home care agencies uh, do uh, uh, in order to uh, keep uh, vulnerable people safe and well in their own homes. And I think we would all like to pay tribute to all the people uh, that uh, do those services on behalf of nearly 1,300 people in Wandsworth who are in receipt of home care at the moment. Uh, I think their carers all do a, a fantastic job uh, and that's something that we all need to, to recognise. Um, with regard to the choice of uh, who will provide care in future, um, every individual, every person for the last, I don't know, 14 or 15 years has had the right to choose who they wish to care for them. It was one of the reforms brought in by the Blair government, uh, which this council supported. We didn't support everything the Blair government did, but we supported that one. Uh, we've continued to support it, and we will support it. And every help and encouragement will be given to any member of the public who wishes to either remain with an existing uh, hair home, <laughs> care home provider or move to a new one. That is entirely their prerogative. The council will assist them in every way possible uh, with uh, everything that they need to do that. So I hope the councillor is reassured by what I've said uh, and uh, will perhaps uh, wish to withdraw his uh, amendment. 
Please motion. Sorry. Councillor McLeod, do you wish to withdraw your motion or do you uh, want 30 no, seconds? No, I, 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 thank, I thank the council for those words, but no, I don't, I don't withdraw. I, I'd, I'd, like, I'd like this house to, to support culturally specific care and show that it does. I think it's important. Okay. All those in favour of the adjournment proposed by Councillor McLeod, please raise your hand. And those against the adjournment? Okay. The adjournment motion is lost by 25 votes to 28. Right, Mayor's announcements. Sorry, hang on. Apologies for absence have been received from councillors Binder, Callan, Forbes, Govindia and Henderson. Are there any other apologies? Uh, item one, the minutes of the meetings held on the 17th of October have been circulated. Can I sign these minutes as a correct record, please? Right, Mayor's announcements. I regret to inform members that Mr. Albert Newman has passed away. He's a former, uh, he commenced his employment with Wandsworth Borough Council on the 4th of March 1968 as Assistant Borough Treasurer. He later became the Chief Executive and Director of Finance of Wandsworth Borough Council from the 1st of January 1984 to the 31st of December 1986. His funeral will take place on the 12th of December. The last living former councillor of the Battersea Metropolitan Council has passed away. Councillor Senior would like to pay tribute to Barbara Hare, but first of all, can I ask the councillor to stand for a minute's silence in her memory? Okay, please be seated. Right, Councillor's announcements uh, continued. So, uh, Councillor Senior. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I will try to be, to be brief. Um, as I know, most of you didn't know Barbara. Uh, but we, when we have these sort of tributes, we often talk about someone being a, a real link to the past. And it sounds a bit of a cliche, but Barbara was. As the Mayor has already pointed out, I think, and I stand to be corrected, she was probably the last surviving member of the Metropolitan Borough Council of Battersea, which of course was abolished in uh, 1964, not long after I was born, so it must have been a long time ago. Uh, Barbara came very much from a Battersea background. Uh, her parents originally lived uh, in Queen's Mansions, which is a mansion block on Lavender Hill, uh, where the post office now is. And she told me the rather ghoulish story of how her father in 1917 or 1918 once stood on the balcony of the uh, mansion block and read his evening newspaper in the light of the zeppelin that was burning over London at the time. Uh, they subsequently moved to Altenburg Gardens, which was where I believe Barbara was born and lived for most of her life. Her mother had been involved in the women's suffrage movement and was very keen and that Barbara should also play her life in civic life. She took the view that if you don't use your vote, uh, then, then uh, there's a problem. 
And as a result, Barbara, in due course, became elected to the Metropolitan Borough of Battersea uh, in the 1950s. I believe she was 23 at the time to the Lavender Ward, as it was then, which is based the southern half of the current uh, Shaftesbury Ward, and served on the council for, I believe, three years. She also had a life, though, outside Battersea, and was very involved working for what was then the Colonial Office, and spent some time in, in northern Rhodesia with Sir Ray Walensky, and often said to me how sad she was that his ideas of a multiracial federation in that area of Central Africa uh, never came to fruit. And, and then she moved back to London and we worked for the Commonwealth Development Office uh, for many years. She remained, however, very involved in civic life in Wandsworth and last stood for the council in Shaftesbury in 1986. I think then the, the, she probably thought the rather brash young men who took over the ward were a bit too aggressive for her liking, but she was pleased when we, we won the ward in 1990. And she continued to be involved uh, in the civic activity thereafter. She was always very insistent on going out and telling on election day. We had to send someone with her who actually did the telling and most of the work, uh, but she was very keen to be seen to be involved. And even in her latter years, when her ill health got a bit much, she was very involved in Battersea United Charities and in her church, St. Barnabas on Clapham Common Northside. Her funeral work, well, along with Mr. Newman, who I didn't know, but I've heard many, many fine things said about, will be held on the 12th of December. And if I could just extend my condolences uh, to Barbara's and to Mr. Newman's family as well. Thank you, Councillor Senior. I understand that uh, Councillor Belton would like to say a few words as well. Councillor Belton. I'm not quite sure why you understand that, actually. I didn't actually know Barbara, though obviously uh, time overlapped to some degree. So all I can say is uh, that I'm sure our side will join with uh, Councillor Senior and the rest of the council in sending condolences and recognising the service that Barbara gave us. Thank you very much, Councillor Bell. Right, um, Mayor's announcements, part three. I'd like to advise members that the civic service will be held on 3rd of February, as you've already heard, at 11 a.m. at St. Mary Magdalene RC Church, East Hill. I'd also like to inform members that Councillor Paula Prey, CBE, is retiring as the Pro Vice Chancellor, or the Vice Chancellor of the University of Roehampton at the end of this uh, academic year. I'm sure all members will join me in congratulating him on his achievement in the role and wish him well for the future. Members are pleased to note that in national recognition of the Council's commitment to the armed forces in 2018, Wandsworth Council has received a gold award uh, signed by the um, Chief of Defence Staff, among others. On tonight's agenda, can members please note that items 21 and 22 are required to be considered as a matter of urgency, and the reasons are set out in full at the top of the, those items. I would like to remind members, when speaking, that the red light comes on 30 seconds before the end of their speech. On item three, are there any members who have any declarations of interest in any of the matters to be considered at this meeting? Councillor Leone Cooper. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to declare an interest as a, a London Assembly member uh, for Merton and Wandsworth on any matters arising this evening relating to the Greater London Authority, including, obviously, TfL. Okay. Um, yes, Mr. Mayor. How's the heart? <laughs> I'm a landlord in Wandsworth. What did you say? Okay, thank you, Councillor Hart. Okay. Item four relates to sealing of documents. Is this item received for, as information? Item five. Are there any petitions? There are. Councillor White. White. There are here. 910 people who asked the council to reconsider its decision to withdraw the specialist cultural sensitive home care service contract for muscular sand holes and provide one with realistic costs 
that they can continue its service. Councillor Gibbons. I have a, uh, a petition from 12 respondent parents at the Franciscan Children's Centre. How many signatures are there, please? Can you tell us? Councillor Stock. I have a petition signed by 526 people to save York Gardens Children's Centre. Councillor Dickerton. Um, I've got a petition for 524 signatures about keeping open Yvonne Carr Children's Centre and making it accessible to all families. Right. Councillor Denfield. I have a uh, petition with 155 signatures from users of the Tooting Triangle Stay and Play to keep it open and accessible to all ages and free of charge. Councillor Humphreys. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I've got a petition signed by 167 Southfields residents asking for improvements to the zebra crossing outside Southfields Academy. Okay. Councillor Lua. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have a petition from the residents of Malbrook Road on the issue of rat running on their street. Councillor Angela Graham. Thank you, councillors. Item six is leaders' questions. Councillor Hogg. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I think first we'll, we'll join in sending our condolences to Councillor Govindia on the bereavement he suffered, and of course we understand uh, he's not here this evening. So turning to address this to the deputy leader, um, I, I'm sorry that, that the Tories were irritated by this question about homelessness, but of course the problem isn't the question. The problem is the 2,711 homeless children in Wandsworth on Christmas Day. Well, I mean, does he think it's acceptable? That, what's that? One child in 30 in our borough, a child in every class, uh, you know, in every school class, is homeless and living in often unsuitable hostel or bed and breakfast accommodation. So can he commit, when we have this discussion next year, that we'll do everything we can to make sure the number is lower, not higher, as it has got for each of the last five years? I thank uh, Councillor, Can Councillor Hogg for, for his question and his kind comments uh, uh, before the question. Um, there is a certain routine to this time of year, isn't there? Uh, decorations, Christmas cards, all the other things, and this question from Councillor Hogg. I think it is now the fourth year running that he's asked this question. Um, and while, and while, while, while I cannot, cannot predict the future, I can repeat to him uh, what, uh, what was reported to the recent ha uh, Housing and Regeneration OSC. Uh, so he knows this fact already, uh, that there were 2,711 children uh, being uh, served under the council's duties towards statutory homeless households. Now let's understand clearly what that means. This is incredibly important, and I very much hope we don't have a repeat of what happened last year. That means that... Um, these children are, 90% of them are with their families in self-contained temporary accommodation and the vast majority of those families uh, have uh, tenure rights equivalent to a uh, assured short hold tenancy. So they are not by any commonly understood, uh, in any commonly understood sense, are they homeless. And he very well, and he very well knows that. He very well knows that. Moreover, what has happened this year, since you last asked the question, Councillor Hogg, is that, of course, the uh, Homelessness Reduction Act uh, came into force in April of this year, uh, uh, an achievement of a Conservative government, and this Council has been assiduous in getting on with the implementation of that, and we're showing some very, already seeing some very encouraging signs. Returning to that 2,700 figure, I, I would be uh, desperately concerned if we have a repeat of the disgraceful behaviour last year of trying to create the impression, as I'm sorry to say you just did now, uh, that that's 2,700 homeless children at Christmas. 
because it wasn't last year and it won't be this year. So if, for example, the MP for Tooting were tempted to tweet that, we have in the written answers uh, included a table which I hope will be helpful. And the MP for Tooting or anyone else who's tempted to do that again, uh, all I would ask is that should you use that 2,700 figure, figure erroneously for Wandsworth, you would at least be consistent and use these figures here, which are the equivalent figures from Labour-run boroughs in London. Thank you. Can, uh, question two, Councillor Hogg. Question two to the Deputy Leader. Uh, do you want a supplementary on the question one? Ah, Councillor Cooper. I was, I was waiting for Councillor Hogg in case he was going to do a supplementary, sorry. Um, is the Deputy Leader cautiously optimistic about the effect that the Homelessness Reduction Act will have on these numbers? And are we starting to see some positive examples of prevention? Uh, I thank Councillor Cooper for the supplementary. I, I too was uh, expecting Councillor Hogg to have a supplementary. I can only assume that I answered the question so fully that he, uh, he uh, couldn't think of a supplementary. Um, in answer to the one that we did get, yes. Uh, as I alluded to, uh, we, we started in April. The Act came into force. These things, of course, take time. It's a huge challenge, but we take it incredibly seriously in this Council. Uh, and Mr. Riley and his team uh, already have, uh, have some very encouraging signs uh, that things are improving. Uh, and, of course, I'm sure we can all agree at this time of year uh, that what we want to see is absolutely zero homeless children uh, across our borough. Uh, so I don't think anyone's going to, uh, going to disagree with that. Second supplementary. Councillor White. Will the uh, leader of your party spend this pre-Christmas engaging in semantics about the official meaning of the word homeless, obviously yes, rather than providing the means for council to build social homes? And will this council time after time pass up opportunities to build homes for social rent, the only decent and fair way we can end this crisis? Battersea Power Station, Nine Elms, and now the regeneration is a good example of this. When are you going to tell your developer friends the party's over and it's time they played their part in ending this scandal. Uh, I thank Councillor White for his second supplementary. Uh, certain predictability to, uh, to the tune he's singing there as well. Uh, we take no lectures from anybody uh, on social housing provision. Uh, our, our, achievements, our achievements are enormous. We are the second, second uh, highest builder of social housing uh, and we'll come on to it later this evening in debate, of any London borough. Uh, and we're way ahead of the mayor's targets, and you know that very well. Uh, we will always be doing more, but we drive ourselves really, really hard. We are investing over £100 million into new social housing, which we'll come to later. Uh, and, Councillor White, really, you need to look at what all other London boroughs are doing and get a sense of our achievements. They really are remarkable. Question two, Councillor Hogg. Question two to the Deputy Leader. Uh, I thank Councillor Hogg for, for this question. Um, slightly puzzling because uh, he, he will know the answer um, following uh, FCROSS in, uh, in November, which is that 18 of the 33 London boroughs uh, have such arrangements. Um, but it's a big mistake to think that uh, that accreditation is any sort of a guarantee uh, because most of those boroughs approach it very much on a case-by-case -case basis uh, because it's much more complicated than you may suppose. Uh, we, of course, as a borough, as a council, uh, pay our own direct employees the London living wage. Uh, that is well known. We've always taken the view that it's not our job to micromanage and dictate to the many, many contractors that we have uh, how they run their businesses. Uh, we set the standards that we require, we expect them to meet them, uh, and we will, uh, we will penalise them if they don't, um, but how they deliver it is entirely up to them. Uh, and it's very interesting, uh, there, was a, there was a report that Councillor Gibbons, I believe, referenced at uh, FCROSS uh, recently, is very interestingly uh, that uh, Card Cardiff Business School, when they looked at 
what actually happens with councils who do pursue the policy of insisting on the London living wage. Uh, what happens is fairly predictable. Uh, the contractors find life much more difficult. Uh, they pass on the costs. Uh, and that, of course, uh, means that somewhere down the line, uh, other savings have to be made. Um, so the consequence of us doing what Councillor Hogg suggests is that our costs would go up uh, and something else would have to give. So I would, uh, I would ask him a question uh, before making a final point. I would ask him what he would save to make that possible. And I would make a final point to him that our approach is somewhat more um, uh, subtle, shall we say, in that we try to understand how we can best achieve social mobility in this borough. And it's our belief that our approach is far more effective, which is why we are the fourth most successful council in the country at achieving social mobility. And we think that our approach on living wage is one of the reasons why. Thank you, Hall. Uh, supplementary, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm sorry he can't commit to this great policy. The London living wage is a real pay rise for the people who sweep our streets, who cook our children's meals at school, the people who care for our older and vulnerable residents, and it gives better services. Um, does he see that we're at a tipping point now with the majority of London councils backing this excellent policy, and will Wandsworth be the last council to join that movement for social mobility? And I'm very pleased uh, to come on to his questions that our side has called a full debate on this, and I'm looking forward to that debate where he will get answers to his questions. Uh, well, thank Councillor Hogg for this supplementary question. I'm sorry to say, I don't think he was uh, listening to my, my first answer. The 18, I repeat, the 18 of the 33 who have signed up, uh, we've checked this carefully, do it very much on a case-by-case -case basis. It is not a blanket policy because those councils realize the difficulties they then get into if they attempt that. Uh, and I would just like to make the point, the specific examples you, you mentioned of, uh, of uh, street cleaning and school meals, uh, everyone here would accept. Those people do an absolutely superb job. They are very much appreciated. That is not the issue here. Question three, Councillor Field. Question three, the Deputy Leader. I uh, thank Councillor Field for, for this question, uh, one we've, we've discussed between us many, many times. Uh, this is very important to us, manifesto commitment over, over several, several years. Uh, it is deeply frustrating that although we have had uh, 27 and a half million pounds on the table for years now, uh, several years, uh, we've had delay after delay uh, and it is becoming extremely frustrating. We, it does feel like we've got a chunk of the M25 outside the town hall, and it really is a ridiculous state of affairs, uh, and we need to sort it out. Uh, I'm pleased to be able to update councillors uh, on the written question that just this afternoon I've managed to fix a meeting with uh, uh, senior managers responsible for this in TfL, and I will be seeing them in the next few weeks uh, to take this up and, and make the point that we really are finding this extremely frustrating. Uh, and we do find it uh, very annoying, frankly, uh, that a neighboring borough, Lambeth, uh, which has an almost identically costed scheme uh, with the Vauxhall gyratory, some 70 million pounds, uh, has had to put in a mere 14 million uh, and that is now underway, whereas we've got 27 million on the table and it's been on the table for years and we're still waiting. It's not satisfactory. Supplementary, Mr. Fair. Councillor Peel. Um, many residents ask when will this happen. Well, I'm glad to hear some progress has been made this afternoon, but what can be done to galvanize the mayor and expedite progress? Uh, <laughs> I, I, it's a very good question, Councillor Field. Thank, thank you. Uh, yes, we'll change the mayor would, would, be, would be, uh, be one idea. I'd welcome suggestions from the party opposite. You, you know the mayor well, obviously. Uh, I, I would welcome any suggestions. I've just explained what I'm doing. I am relentless in badgering TfL, and I will be, uh, I'll be seeing them very shortly. Uh, we're keeping up uh, the pressure from our side. It's all we can do. We'll continue to do it. Uh, but uh, any other suggestions are very welcome because I think we'd all agree we need it. Second supplementary. Councillor Carpenter. Um, does the Deputy uh, Leader recognise that uh, delivery of this scheme is not entirely in the gift of either Wandsworth or TfL because it requires the acquisition of some land? 
land to acquire, which we're actually changing our standing orders for, for um, one of our com committees. Um, and if difficulties come in, in acquiring that land, if we have to go to compulsory purchase, for example, which I hope we don't, there could be a very significant delay. In the event that that happened, would uh, uh, he consider releasing the, the, these monies for less ambitious schemes, which are equally required in the event, and then coming back to the scheme later on? Thank Councillor Carper for the supplementary questions. Uh, you're quite right, of course. I mean, it's, uh, there, are, there are complexities to it, and, uh, and uh, land assembly is one of the issues. Um, I think our main point would be that the value of our £27.5 million diminishes over time, and in the several years that it's been sitting on the table, uh, what we can do with that, what we can achieve with that, uh, obviously lessens slightly every year. Um, so these problems of land assembly become more acute as time goes by. As for the suggestion, uh, I don't think that would be uh, a very good idea. I think that would send uh, a, very, uh, a very worrying message to TfL and all of our other partners, uh, but most importantly to our residents, I think they would be alarmed if we did that. Uh, I've got no intention of doing it. The thought had never occurred to me uh, until it was just raised. Uh, I think that would be a, a very big mistake, so we won't be doing that. Question four, Councillor Critchard. Uh, question four to the Deputy Leader, please. I thank, uh, I thank Councillor Critchard for this, this very important question. And in the written answer, hopefully there is reassurance there that the mobilisation of, uh, of this contract, this new contract, will be done very, very carefully. Uh, it takes many months to do these things properly. It will be done with the greatest sensitivity, very well aware of the concerns and and pleased to see uh, so many people here this evening expressing that concern. That is very well uh, understood. Um, I, would, uh, I would, though, like to make a, a point on, on, the timing, on the timing that uh, there is a risk that if there's any further delay uh, with making the decision that we have to make tonight, that that could jeopardize the delivery of this contract, uh, which is scheduled for June. That